There are almost 200 official countries in the world today, but there are dozens more breakaway states, determined to be separate, but officially not recognized. Some survive peacefully with their own borders, money, and presidents, but others are a magnet for terrorists and weapon smuggling, and have armies ready for a fight. Welcome to places that don't exist. Georgia has a particular problem with breakaway states. After the collapse of the USSR, Georgia became independent. But three parts of the country, South Ossetia, Abkhazia and Ajaria, then broke away from Georgia. Conflicts broke out, thousands were killed and the whole region has suffered ever since. I drove with my guide, Natalia, through Georgia to South Ossetia on Russia's southern border. On the way, we saw posters of the new Georgian president, Saakashvili, who took power in winter 2003. The new president, who's supported by the West, has vowed to bring all the breakaway regions, which the Russians support, back into the fold. Although officially one country, this is where Georgian jurisdiction ends. Tensions were high at the border. Just a day before, 50 Georgian soldiers had been taken captive by South Ossetian forces. Well, these guys are now saying that we actually can't go back because the South Ossetians might try to kidnap us. We can't go forward because the Russians are ahead of us and they won't let us go past either. So we, we could be stuck here at this uh, Georgian checkpoint. The Georgians will take us to the, up to the point where the, the peacekeepers checkpoint is about five kilometers from here. So then we'll have to talk to the Russians and Ossetians and see whether they let us in because that's where the Georgian jurisdiction ends. So we're in no man's land now? Yes, that's right. The buffer zone between the two is controlled by Russian peacekeeping forces, despite Russia's open support for South Ossetian independence. Georgians say the Russians just want to keep soldiers in Georgia. Natalia spoke to a group of Russian soldiers who are happy to explain where their loyalties lie. The guys that are saying that they identify themselves with South Ossetians and they're ready, they might be here as, uh, on a peacekeeping mandate, but as soon as there's some sort of an aggression or some sort of an implication that there will be war, they're going to tear off, and that's how they said it, they're going to tear off their peacekeeping badges and they're going to they're gonna fight for self societies. But they were telling me, they were, listen, you are America's puppet, you know that. There are Americans training Georgians, now there are British Army training Georgians. You are, you are the puppets mm -hmm. of Western yeah, can we just ask the general what is his aim here? What is what is you know, what is what is the aim? It's only Russian peacekeepers here who are keeping stability. The Russian general eventually gave permission for us to cross into South Ossetia and we followed his army jeep to a South Ossetian government ministry to register our arrival. This is actually the South Ossetian foreign ministry, which almost sounds like a contradiction in terms, but it's a proper breakaway state. They formed their own government, and of course they've got their own foreign ministry. For 12 years, South Ossetia has existed as a self-declared country, with its own flag, army and government, but not recognised by any major state. The people here are mainly Ossets, who speak a different language to Georgians. The government has vowed to fight to the death rather than rejoin the Georgian fold. They clearly don't think much of President Saakashvili. We've got a uh, South Ossetian magazine here, a news magazine. And it's got a picture of the uh, Georgian president, Mikhail Saakashvili, on the front. It's hard to think of a more unflattering portrait. He's got the hand of America using him as a puppet. It's even got him with a swastika armband on, leading death and pestilence into uh, South Ossetia. <laughs> it's really rude. 
here's more news from South Ossetia. These are the Georgian troops who were taken captive or hostage here, depending on your point of view. We were just doing this. Show the, show the tape. <laughs> we just filmed this. You just walked in when we were doing this. You see, look. Now you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we've managed to basically persuade the rather tough South Ossetian woman in there that we should be allowed to stay. I think she was at one point going to kick us out, but she's now going to let us stay, and hopefully we'll be allowed to stay a little bit longer than the two hours they initially said we could be in South Ossetia. Oh, we're not allowed to film. Oh. The capital of South Ossetia was attacked by Georgian forces in the early 90s when the Ossets announced they wanted their independence. It's a beautiful old building. And this is the South Ossetian flag on the roof. They're saying that where there's new plaster, this is where bullets hit the building uh, during the war just over 10 years ago. Well, they don't want to film that. Sorry? take their pictures there. Why? I think basically because over there is the um, government ministry, uh, maybe where the president works. And they're saying they don't want you to film that. The president of South Society is right behind. Ah. Where is it? Which one is it? Just over there. Can we go and speak to him? No, we can't go and speak to him. The president of South Ossetia is just over there. He's just gone now and we really wanted to speak to him, but they're, they're saying we can't, they won't let us go and chat with him. They're saying before we take your tapes away, just keep going, start going, start, leave before we take your tapes away. Okay.